Hi, I'm Amrit. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Hello, I'm Hannah. And today we're going to be talking about confidence. Am I? I don't know what you're What's the difference between confidence and self-esteem? I think one of the biggest thing is that like confidence is being confident in what you can do and your own skills and your own abilities, whereas self-esteem is more like knowing your own worth and being confident in yourself, really. So, uh, what's some tips on how to feel more confident? Even if you don't feel confident, you can pretend that you are. I think fake it till you make it is one of my favourite quotes ever because if you're walking along with your head held high, you're not mumbling, you're thinking about what you're saying and generally you look more confident, I think people will be more... Like respond to your yeah. confidence. Yeah, I think people will respond to that really well and they'll feel more confident in turn and then mm -hmm. just like a bit of a cycle really, so if you can pretend yeah. that's always good. <laughs> I remember I grew up, I was the tallest one in the class, I was always super tall and I used to hunch a lot and I used to find I was very um, self-conscious of the way I looked but about halfway through high school I kind of forgot all about that and I wasn't awkward about my height and it just the response I got was crazy just having my shoulders back standing tall people responded to it and really came up to me and I felt like I made so many more friends in my last years of high school when I wasn't curled into myself and kind of protecting myself. One thing which I like to think of is that people don't know you this is an opportunity to kind of show yourself in the light that they want, you want people to see you in. It's a challenge and just another opportunity to almost reinvent yourself, but the way you want to be perceived by people. Okay. Yeah. So when it actually comes to being face to face and meeting new people for the first time, how do you go about feeling more confident about it? I think the initial hello can be quite a scary thing, but I think once you're over that part, if you try and find something you've got in common with another person, that can be a really good way to get them talking. Everyone feels like they're in the same boat, so you just have to remember that everyone's a little bit nervous and the more you can talk to someone, the more at ease they'll feel, so mm -hmm. yeah. How about for people who are feeling particularly apprehensive about meeting new people? I mean, I always think, what would Beyonce say to? <laughs> I mean, like, she's got a bit of an alter ego, so you could too, there's no stopping you from having a little bit of Beyonce inside you. Great advice. <laughs> Something that's quite important is not to use your phone as a security blanket. Mm. I know it's really easy to fall into that trap, but if you're sat there on your phone, you might miss an opportunity to meet someone who's really great. So as much as it is comfortable just scrolling down your phone, I'd say try to avoid it in social situations. Mm -hmm. Just try and get yourself out there a bit more and speak to anyone that you can. Yeah. Sometimes if you see someone who's on their phone, take it as an indicator that they're nervous as well. Yeah. And go and speak to them because you're probably in the same boat with how you're feeling. So um, if you do see someone, kind of save them and say hello and they could be your best friend. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Would you go into these new situations by yourselves or would you want to take a friend with you? I mean, if you can't, I suppose it's not the end of the world. It sort of forces you to speak to new people. But if you can take a friend with you, it can be so reassuring having someone by your side that you know and that you know is a fan of you as well. <laughs> but I think it's important to not stick with that friend the entire time. It's nice to have them there as a little bit of comfort, but try not to seclude yourselves from the rest of the group. So if you can go out and both speak to new people, then it's a bit of a win-win. <laughs> And also if you're looking to meet new people, you can always join social clubs and after school activities, um, meet people with similar interests. I met a good group um, when I was playing hockey at high school, so I recommend joining a sports team or something along those lines to meet people with similar interests. If we had to come up with three take-home um, responses for how to feel more confident, what would you suggest? Definitely my number one would be to fake it. Put on an image that you're confident, go up to people, say hi. Even if you are super nervous inside, if you give off the idea that you are confident, people will respond and feel more comfortable around you and eventually you'll get used to it and you'll, that confidence will be natural. Yeah, definitely. I would also say I think is that sometimes you just have to take that leap and you've got to push yourself because the initial hello can be the scariest part. Once you're over that bit, you can fake your confidence, you can get chatting to them, find some common ground and it's a lot easier. So yeah, just push yourself, set yourself challenges because I think that can really do you good in the future. For me, I think music's one of my big things as well. Um, it really helps me to boost my confidence because I can feel it in myself when I listen to my favourite songs. Um, so when I go into a situation I pull out my headphones and I feel like that can convey when I meet new people. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. With music and me, I think it either calms me down and I feel mm -hmm. a lot better about the situation, or it's a real feel-good thing and I get a little boost from it. So either way, I think music can work really well with confidence. Mm -hmm. So, Hannah and Caitlin, I just want to say thank you for coming in and talking to us today. Thank you for having us. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.